I mean, I think all Braxton Miller uh, was doing great uh, just as uh, because of volume issue, we decided not to throw him yesterday. He'll go tomorrow, practice tomorrow. And Jeff Harmon, we held him out because of uh, uh, just once again volume on his foot. But he is, he, we anticipate, well, he has full speed. That was my choice to uh, do that. So I'll answer any questions for you. Front row left, Rusty. Uh, a couple areas you were concerned about. I know in Chicago were offensive line and the defense after the last three or four ball games. So I just wondered if after a week of practice, if you feel a little bit differently about those two areas in particular. Yeah, Joel Hale is really. Uh, you know, we, we moved him from defense line to offense line, and very admirable uh, attempt in the spring. But he's actually looking like an offense lineman did very, has done very well. He's in this battle for the spot right now. The battle for the left guard spot is uh, Tony Underwood, um, Joel Hill, and then Billy Price. Now Billy Price has entered that, and and he at times looks fantastic. So. Uh, I'm a little more, I think we're more, a little more stabilized at that position. Right tackle is getting a little stabilized with um, right, Daryl Baldwin. Daryl Baldwin, right tackle, Pat Elfline, Jacoby Boren, and Chad Lindsay uh, battling out center. Left guard we just discussed, and Taylor Decker is really having a good camp at left tackle. Uh, defense is uh, uh, doing very well, especially the areas that we are we're not very good at as pass defense. So I'm very pleased with where we're at. I think they continued the cycle that they started in spring, and uh, it's, good. it's going pretty well. Um, yeah, is, are there guys that have really kind of gone from either nowhere or kind of just barely in the mix to to really making a statement so far? Guys. Are there? Are there? Some well, there's a bunch. I just don't want to leave people out, but I mean, Von Bell and uh, you know, Von Bell and, and Tyvis Powell are two guys that I guess are relatively unknowns that they're playing like veteran players right now. Um, you know, Dontre Wilson, Jalen Marshall are in a nice heated battle at the H back position. Corey Smith and Michael Thomas have really started the battle for one of the top two, three receiver spots. And I could go on and you know, there's a there's a bunch of guys. Just don't have time to go through them all. Front row, Todd. Urban, since we last talked, the uh, O'Bannon thing came down. Autonomy issue was passed. Uh, do you see this as you know, maybe opening up the door for, obviously, college football is an arms race as it is, making it even more so of an arms race for facilities? and. You know, I, I apologize. I probably should know more about the whole situation. I don't. You know, I, I, uh, Gene Smith and I have had minor discussions about it. I got to get a team ready to play a very good Navy team, a Virginia Tech team, and I have not read it. I understand there's a ruling, and, and I apologize. I know I should probably be more up to speed on that, but I'm not. Front row, Tim. Yeah, Urban, if you uh, started the game today, uh, who would be your starting running back? And has Rod Smith jumped into the picture maybe a little more than? Yeah, maybe thought he would. I don't know. Yeah, Rod is uh, Rod would, is in the battle now. In the spring, I didn't feel he was. You know, he really didn't practice much. He had to concentrate on academics. And we pulled him out of spring practice. He's had a very good whatever it's been four or five days. So uh, you know, Ezekiel Elliott is back. Then you have him, Curtis, him, and Rod. Briante has also had a very couple of good days. So Warren Ball's the guy. He's missed a week. The good news is he comes out tomorrow and practices. So I, we're not ready to name a starter yet, but the names. Right now, off the top of my head, the three or four would be uh, Zeke, Rod Smith, Curtis Samuel, and Briante. Uh, and one quick follow up to what Todd just asked you. Uh, even though you haven't thought a lot about it, I would think you're getting questions from recruits, from recruits' families about what's coming and stuff. But what are you just generally telling them about what could be down the road from the standpoint of increased? Stipend or cost of a well, college. I, I have no idea, Tim, and okay. there's not a recruit's been asked. Uh, I've never been asked that until right. today. Yeah, I, I don't. And I, I imagine uh, I'm gonna when we get a break, G, let Gene and I sit and talk because I once again I have I'm almost embarrassed. I have no idea what all that means. I really I don't know the ruling. I heard there's a ruling, and it's third down and six. We have to get that first down. That's front roll left, Doug. Urban, that running back battle. Can Curtis Samuel, as a true freshman, Absolutely. do everything you need a running back to do? I mean, every time I got to be careful because I do this, but I love that kid. And man, oh man, does he go hard. He's talented and he will play next, this year. I mean, he's, you know, he's like a, he's a fast guy. I mean, he can run between the tackles and. To be determined, but 
I've done as well. Yes, he can. He's and another really guy, um, we know Donovan Munger didn't play at all last year. He seems like he's in the mix on the defensive line. Yeah, it was really a tough situation. He had those blood clots in his legs, and we were really concerned he was not going to be allowed to play football. So our medical staff working with the Cleveland Clinic, and uh, he's a wonderful kid, and, and uh, so he's playing, and he'll be in the mix. He's doing a nice job. Far left, Matt. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what this, you're getting into two days, you got your Ackerman Road Camp. What's this next week about? What do you want to find out about guys here? Uh, over the, How difficult is this week on? Well, I think there's a couple uh, stages of, a, of a, we call it Journey 14 is what we're on right now. And uh, you have the Matt Drills off-season program, which is really tough. You can kind of identify who can, you know, the fight or flight mentality. Uh, spring practice, and then and then this this next week is real. It's on, and and they just got a little dose of what it's like, and then they're off today. So these next it's two one two one two. I can't add those all up, but that's a lot of practices in the next five six days, and that's when the the homesickness and the you know start feeling sorry for each other. So you find out what kind of team, and it's going to be real hard. And so we'll find out at the end of uh, this next week. I'll have a good indication what kind of team we have. Right now, it's it's everything's pretty good. Uh, but this next week is when you really got to stay healthy. You got to be smart as a coaching staff, but you also need to see how they fight when it gets tough. And this will be the toughest week that they have all year. Second row left, Bill. Urban, you said in Chicago that Dontre had added about 10 pounds of weight and might be able to run between the tackles. Have you made any determination on that yet? Yeah, if he holds it, he's, he's pushing the, uh, let me think now. I want to say he's 180s, almost 190. What you think about, that's almost 20 pounds he's gained since he's been here. And so we have not put him on Monday. I'm gonna. I met with him yesterday, and we're gonna start putting him with the tailbacks to work some inside zone. That's a to have an outside guy to be able to do that. That's that's a big advantage. Also, any thought of him returning punts as well as kickoffs? He's doing both right now. Uh, he'll be the starting kick returner as of right now. The starting punt returner. We're still determining. Is Braxton pretty much on schedule? I know you guys are yeah. less than three weeks away from the opener. Is this where you hoped he would be, or is he just if you could talk about where he's at? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I, w I anticipated this. I've dealt with the guys with arm issues before, and and uh, we're, we're being very cautious. He could have certainly practiced yesterday, but we're in it for the long haul. So, yeah, he's right on schedule. Coach, there was some talk in the spring that the offense just wasn't going to be able to look the same this year with losing the offensive linemen, losing Carlos Hyde, things like that. Is kind of the process to get that where you want to go kind of still in progress, and is Braxton being hurt kind of hurt you in there as far as kind of trying to make things a little look It's a little still early. If this was next week, next week, uh, you know, next Saturday and he didn't go, then that's going to hinder our progress. When I say that we leaned on Carlos Hyde quite a bit, like any coach would with a player like that, an offensive line like that, uh, we – uh, we're building an offensive line, uh, so it's going to look a little different. We'll probably rely on quick passing game much more than we did. Um, like we have at other places, you build it around what you have. And last year, you got a little comfortable with that big back and those, that great offensive line. Uh, far left, Lori. Coach Meyer, is the alignment of the staff where you want it to be right now, or is that something, too, that can be built a little bit more between now and game I think one? that's a, that's a great question. That's uh, – to me, that's a you know everybody's got great players, and when you hear people blame players, that's incorrect. Everybody's got great players. It's the alignment of staff and the chemistry on your team, and those I'm very comfortable with where we're at. I think I'd put it in the great category. I think uh, Luke Fickle and, and Chris Ash, there's incredible chemistry in the defensive staff room. All this remains to be seen, and next week a lot of you know it's going to be tough on the coaches too. So uh, I'm I'm really watching and watching it closely. But high character guys that are really talented at their skill. Uh, it's really very strong right now. If there was a game tomorrow, Coach, would you be relying on your running game a little bit more because you'd still be limiting Braxton's arm, or would he be 100% if there were a game tomorrow? Uh, if the game was tomorrow because of where he's at, we would be very cautious with Braxton. But we have three weeks. All right, Clay. You always seem to lean on kickers to get up in their face when they're kicking. The school's always had a good one. How does Nuremberger, how has he done so far? Uh, I really like him. He's... Uh, just was with his family. He's uh, actually a pretty good punter, too. He's our backup punter. And uh, Kyle Clinton and him, we, we haven't named Nur uh, Nuremberger the kicker yet, but uh, he, he's a really talented guy. What's his range? Oh, don't know that yet. Last couple questions because we've got some players out there. We'll go to the far right here. Ray? 
Coach, you said you hadn't read the O'Bannon uh, report on the lawsuit. What about the autonomy issue that was voted on Thursday that gives you, your school, and, uh, and other major college football teams the right to set their own? No, I really don't. You know, I, I have such a great relationship with our administration, AD, that at the, at the, when Gene and I will sit down at some point, but it's not now. You know, we got the training camp we're getting ready to go in, and uh, I honestly have no idea what all that stuff means other than the idea in general of stipends for beat, your players. Beat Navy. Yeah, the beat in Navy. general, the idea of stipends for your players is that something. Navy. Far left, Tom. Urban, uh, what, what have you seen with Taylor Decker from this time last year to, to now? Uh, he's a product of cu uh, culture and in in the best culture on our team, and that was the offensive line. He's a leader. He's tough. He's strong. And to say he came that way here, I, I don't know if I'd say that, and he'd be the first one to say it. So he's a leader. Uh, right now, Jeff Hireman, someone, uh, well, Coach Brown, uh, our friend, uh, my great friend, Mac Brown's here. Mac, you want to come up here and handle this for me? No comment. No comment. Uh, but uh, Mac said, uh, Coach Brown's asked me, who is the, what's the pulse of the offense? And right now it's Jeff Hireman, uh, Taylor Decker, and, uh, and uh, Braxton Miller. And Taylor Decker, to thank you, you said that a couple years ago. So he's come as far as anybody on our team. And final question, far left. Rusty? Uh, you're, you, I know it's awfully early. You guys are in the top ten in one preseason poll, and you're going to be in another one that comes out next week. I'm just wondering, as you look at this team compared to your previous dozen teams you've had. Is this going to be a Navy question? Or no, no. Well, sort of, yeah. Because if you lose the Navy, you won't be ranked. But <laughs> 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 is this, is this team feel Check his credentials for me. <laughs> <laughs> does this team feel like it has that kind of promise? Yes. Yeah, I think this team has. I think we're, if you had to say what's the difference between this team and last year's team, we're faster. Uh, you just, you know, there's a couple areas a guy's got to step up. You know, Josh Perry's got to step up and play big. He's replacing Shazier. And that offensive line has to stay healthy and get better. But it does have a feel of a very good team.